Hey everybody! It's time for the Celtic Ring Radio Show and I am so excited about tonight. Tonight is going to be so much fun because it's our birthday celebration bash extravaganza. I've been calling it all sorts of things. We have been on the air tonight for one year. That's crazy awesome. I know. So the Celtic Rain Radio Show is here for you. I'll go over the little spiel I go over. Celtic Rain Radio Show was created because I had something in my heart five years ago, six years ago now, six years ago, where I wanted to be able to play small label independent artist music. And I kept looking for places for our band to get played, and it was just almost impossible. It was ridiculous. It was really stupid. And so I kept thinking, there's got to be a place. And then I thought, well, maybe if I make a place, uh, I wanted to start a whole radio station. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a little bit more than I can chew at this moment. Let's not buy enough more than you can chew. Uh, and Rebecca, calm down. Let's just try one show and see what happens. It's really cool. So I did it and here we are. So if you are a small label or independent artist and you have music that you want to be played and it's family friendly, meaning don't be mean, don't curse, don't put people down. Don't put religions down. You know, you know all the good stuff. Send it to CelticGrain777 at gmail.com. If you are watching somewhere else besides YouTube, you should go to youtube.com forward slash C for channel forward slash CelticGrain and go and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe because then you know exactly when this is going to happen. So guys, we're doing things a little different tonight because it is a celebration. So I'm going to bring them on one at a time saying hello, hello, hello. Here is Miss Darwin Prophet. How are you, my dear? Most fabulous. How are you? Yay. I am great. That's awesome. And then we have Mr. Samuel Lawson from Celtic Rain. Hello. Hey, babe. I'm, I also am here. <laughs> that's true and then that's we right. have mr adam riviera from adam riviera <laughs> yeah. yay it's fun and it's, it's then lazy. i have Just to rivia. actually rivia i'm so Just sorry rivia. yeah that's so, a no, don't worry i i get emails and introduced when somebody has that spell or autocorrect all of a sudden i'm introduced as adam riviera and so i feel like i need to get those big like fluffy Rivia. sleeves when i go on a stage when you, I'm should. you should so, <laughs> should. you should so have those even if you should still have those i should then we have mr have jeff keston from celtic rain hey jeff hello all hey and then we have mr oh. philadelphia phil how are you mr man doing great Awesome. Awesome. So tonight, it's going to be a little different. We are going to play some amazing music, but these gorgeous people are going to be dancing with us. They have some songs they're going to be performing as well. Um, so you guys get to have so much fun. You guys get to ask some wonderful things of these wonderful people. We already have people saying, happy birthday, Celtic Rain Radio Show. Thank you, Natalie. David says, happy rain anniversary. I'm so going to use that. That That's is cute. so freaking hilarious. That is adorable. Yeah. All right. So, you guys, I'm going to take you off for just a little while, and then you're going to come back and just dance with me a little bit, okay? Sound good? Cool. Going to be a beautiful time. Bye, guys. Bye. If there's so many of you, we have to be like one at a time. There needs to be an all button. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyways, needless to say, here is the music that's coming up next. You guys ready? Lucky One by Phil Reed. This is a new one for you guys. It's going to be really, really cool. And then we have The Xmas Case by Victor Sierra. And then Celtic Grain is going to play Caledonia for you. Well, it's going to play, and then we're going to have fun dancing to it. But that's, you know, here nor there. We're doing a little Caledonia. I thank you guys. It's going to be so much fun. Well, we're going to do this. And then we're going to do some dancing, dancing. You know, I'm so excited because usually in this first set, it's just me dancing. And now I have other people that are going to dance with me. And that's so wonderful. I'm so excited. You guys ready? Here we go. She's in the mirror. Checking on her phone. Oh, is somebody reaching? Never alone. What's in her mind? I've never known. Cause the words that she said. 
Scottish scarf. I know, right? Exactly. Well, you guys, it is the one year anniversary of the Celtic Rain radio show. And I'm telling you what, you guys are my most beautiful friends to come on the show with me and celebrate this amazing time. I'm so stinking excited. It's like, it's weird to think that it's been on for a whole year. And that there's just been so many people that have been. Who is playing Caledonia in the background? 
<laughs> I think I I'm know gonna, who it is. I'm going to blame Mr. Samuel. I'm going to blame Samuel. It's not. He actually is not. Blame Samuel. <laughs> blame Samuel. It's usually always Samuel, but it's not this time. Blame your eyes, Samuel. <laughs> well, I do have. I do actually have questions for you guys. I do have, and I, I would love. I would love to be able to hear from you guys. So I, I know I'm going to ask you, like, what are you guys doing next and all that great jazz. But but first off, let's get philosophical. <laughs> let's get all oh, that's, fun. Yeah, that's not, that's Phil, not dangerous. Ever. Philosophical? Never. Wait, are, are, are you really are you talking about Phil? No. Which Phil? Um, <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> There is one down there, so you know oh. there you go. But I have a question. So, I, what have you guys been? So, what since since this whole pandemic and everything? I know things have changed for us, like how we're writing and 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 what what things are influencing us right now because it's just such a weird world right now, you know. So, so what are what are some of the practices that you've you've really uh, enveloped into your life? now that things are kind of quite different? What are the things that you're doing that's helping you write music, that's helping you stay sane, that you've enveloped into your life right now? Well, for me, everything changed. I lost my mother. Yeah. I, I was caretaker for my mother for a year. She had pancreatic cancer. And uh, I lived in Texas most of my life, and plenty of other places as well. But I came up yeah. here to take care of her. And then um, now I've inherited her farm and her horses and her animals and her and things. My, grandmother my grandmother's here. things. Um, so I am and, uh, here uh, now. And, and, most um, of my life. I'm so feeding the horses twice a day. Well. Really but I came say. up here to take care They're of her. Fabulous. <laughs> and ma majestic and gigantic and fabulous and i love them and it's wonderful a bunch of redheads all all chestnuts <laughs> and um so I, i've recently started getting back into meditation um, nice to try and focus my days because time even though i've never believed in linear time or at least i haven't for the last oh a couple of decades of my life um it's even more profound now finding wow. that one must accomplish something every day whether it's yeah. a good nap or it's a new song or it's um reaching out to someone in need um even if that's herself so uh it's been it's been a profound change and uh, i i am actually quite blessed <laughs> because my Students all were online, and I was able to make that change in my life without. Oh, that's wonderful! That's wonderful. An undue hardship. Um, the hardship of losing my mom was enough. So. Yeah. Yeah. What about that's you, what I've Phil? Been doing. And, uh, I I am actually quite blessed because my students all were online, and I was uh, able to make that. Change. Rebecca. <laughs> so, what about you, Phil? What's what's been what's so been listening. the thing in your life? Well, it's been a thing in my life. Um, boy, so many things. Um, the pandemic meant staying home a lot for 14 yeah. solid months. Nobody crossed the threshold into my apartment. And th that yeah. meant an awful lot of time to write. So I'm, I'm overwhelmed with new songs. Um, mm. I've lost count now. The la I was cataloging the songs to get ready to record. Um, yeah, and you've been, and you and Samuel have been hearing this forever. I've been supposed to start recording since what two years ago, I think, when we did. Yeah, uh, it's been a minute. <laughs> when we when we did, uh, it's a little bit complicated, I think. Um, yeah, since then, I think I've, I've written about. Yeah. Oh, we are. Oh, awesome. Yes. Um, <laughs> we did like I've done like fifty or sixty more songs since then, and and just this week, um, I started a new project, which is really exciting. Um, I'm hoping that by next year, I'll have an entire other album. Um, I wrote. Um, I'm co-writing with an amazing person, and 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 Rebecca, you, you and Samuel met Karen at um, was it November up at uh, Sugar Creek, I think. Yeah. And we're so. we're writing. Yeah, we're writing a whole album based on um, 
sled dog musher themes and the Iditarod, Alaskan Iditarod and uh, uh, lower 48 mushers and all sorts of things. I just finished three songs. We, we did three songs this week. Uh, nice. And I'm having a grand time writing about something entirely different than than the usual. Um, well, it, so it makes we're hoping... sense that you would write something about mushing dogs and and those kind of things because you've gotten quite hairy. <laughs> yes. I'm like, yes, I'm like, oh nice, my goodness, nice beard, babe, nice beard. <laughs> you need a dog for your cover. You need a dog Do I need, for your actually, cover. Um, we until have a few Falcor. Minutes ago. Oh my god, if we could get him yeah. the next days until about. Until about 10 minutes ago, I had a retired lead sled dog sitting on the sofa next to me. And she decided the show wasn't wow. of her interest. And she got up and went over well, to take a nap. Ours, so, ours has never been trained as that. So therefore, I don't think he would I, be disciplined enough to do it. I, I think Falcor, Falcor is more the model type. Uh, much more the model type than, than the, than the, than the so. sled dog pulling the sled type. But uh, yeah, we're trying to get a whole. St in fact, um, one of the lines in one of the song, I have a song called I "I'm in Love with the Dogs or the Sled Dog Musher," and one of the lines in there is, uh, "You're kind of woolly," and I like that. That's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I think there's some people in this on this show that resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. Just uh, a little bit. What are you so about? that's what's been up for me is like, and I'm building a studio. I've got a. Samuel will like this a little, little bit of techie talk. I have a uh, Neve ten seventy three clone preamp, and a uh, Black Lion audio modded uh, Pro Tools rig, and a uh, couple of new microphones and a nice ribbon microphone and some other cool stuff, uh, and about and a whole mountain of acoustic foam that I'm going to be building a studio to do some of this recording in. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then I'm going to disappear for about two or three years, I think. That's well, not until after I, I sugar Creek, um, sugar Creek's coming up on the fourth Saturday again this month. So there you go. Not until well, then. Mr. Mr. Adam, what about you? What has been, what has been a practice in your life that is, that has brought you, brought you through <laughs> this crazy times? Yeah, it was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely a very entertaining adventure on the fact of it's like, okay, I I can't go out and play. I can't do anything with my studio. So let's learn new techniques. And so I, I was because at the time I was getting ready to do some work with, uh, you know, doing like Irish music. And one thing that I was like brought attention to was there's, you know, there's different forms of like technique on playing the bar run from your hand, you know, the old school, you know, the original that, you know, the OG Ross common using your hand to the oh. carry style, which how I was originally trained as, and then the West Limerick or AKA top end or modern techniques. I'm like, well, I've had a lot of people ask me about that and I don't know how to do it. So let's, let's learn top end technique. Nice. So, <clears throat> so learn how to do that. And I actually like it better on the fact that it, I can last longer and it hurts less playing top end style compared to carry hmm. uh, for me. Yeah. It's just, really now it's just like, yeah, my forearm, everything would get just beat. And I, even when I would teach people how to play the carry technique, it was like, okay, you know, you know, hold it like a paintbrush and then you're going to whip it like a, like an old mercury thermometer and have like kids look at me like, what? It's like, yes, we would put poison <laughs> you know, like this, this device <laughs> filled with one of the worst poisons known to man in our mouth to see if we were sick or not. Yes. Um, you know, so yeah, so that's like that Gen X and up can actually appreciate and understand the whole mercury Absolutely. thermometer thing. And, <laughs> and then, and so, yeah, so my, you know, and I, when I would teach people to play, it's like, yeah, it's like, you're just constantly going the beach is that way. And <laughs> both, uh, you know, doing West Limerick, I'm like, Oh, this is just, old school classical like me doing the timpani french you know french timpani technique and i'm just right. bouncing my fingers up and down I'm like oh yeah it's like this is so much easier i can do this all day so learned that and then during that time did a whole lot of online performances and workshops and at one point uh because again i couldn't go to my studio really do anything it wasn't until like almost a few months into the pandemic hit um you know just allowed to have people to go out at all I yeah. uh, was getting more I was getting more bands coming to, to rehearse, which was great because I was scared out of my mind. I'm like, 
crap, I'm going to lose my studio. Like, you know, my baby, yeah. this has, has been my dream to have this venue and, and, <laughs> but luckily got people that came out. And now the thing I'm doing, I brought back my open house event. Yes. And so I'm that. that you guys are going to be there this month. And so That's third right. Fridays and, you know, it opens up with community drum circle. You could, you know, just, I have drums there, bring drums, dance, have fun have a variety of artists throughout the indie area that come out and have a booth. And then I bring in just local talent just to do, you know, just a little bit. And we have a woman who organizes local poets and writers to read some of their works as well. And so it's fun. Just when I tell my musicians friends like, yeah, this, this isn't a paid gig. This is just a live rehearsal, pass the hat, have some fun, try out some new material, connect with other people. It's just like, yeah, it's like, and now I'll be like, yeah, this isn't, you know, for exposure. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, I'm being upfront. This is non-paying. However, it's like, we pass the hat and hopefully we can cover something, you know, to take care of you. And now I've, it's been great having artists and musicians re and have already reached out to me saying, hey, do you have anybody booked this month? Mm -hmm. So that's been fun because that was always my dream to, you know, have, you know, just up literally a playground that's the name of the studio playground productions mm -hmm. having a place for creative types to get together and you know for me to utilize when i host my events as well as anybody else to want to throw their own event as well and yeah. and i've got my and right now i got my big showcase at the end of this month at the theater at the ford and lawrence uh, it's with the arts for lawrence program so but it's a this one is focused on like cultural heritage so i'm doing right you know, um, yeah, Irish, Cuban, Brazilian, and West African, Zimba you know, Zimbabwean music, uh, Native American style music, and Middle Eastern. So that's more like, you know, uh, like Turkish, uh, Lebanese, and I'm doing like a traditional drum solo with a traditional style belly dancer. And, and then I'm going to be offering workshops, teaching the instruments that I'm going to be performing for this event at the end of this month. Uh, spread out through the year and those are on my web, uh, at least my Facebook page and website. And so, and I, and I've got an album I'm working on. It's, it's been two years. It's one of those things as to where, like for me, it's like, you know, it was just kind of like that survival mode. So I had to jump on variety of gigs and, and for me, I was originally tra <clears throat> trained as a jazz drummer. So when it came to gigs, it was literally, you got the gig, you got the budget first and then from there, you kind of grabbed other musicians or you started preparing for that gig. Yeah. And and one gig, which I was going to connect, you know, a lot of you guys about an indie. Um, Kathy Morris has a program called Arts with a Purpose. Oh, yeah, and, Kathy. Yep. Yeah, so she's got a program called Arts with a Purpose. And so she hooks me up. I'm doing like adult day, like independent adult daycare centers. I'm doing these like youth mm. like community bookstores <laughs> and and I get to you know perform and teach and interact, nice. and you know it's good pay. It's fun. You're appreciated, and so I've been idle enough when a lot of things kind of shut down. Other things opened up, like other venues yeah. and opportunities. And so for me, I've been doing more. You know, I've been it's been great for me. I've been wanting to play out more. I love my studio. I love. Anytime I get a new client or any musician to come to it, I love it. But my main true love has always been performing, interacting, and then also like teaching, just being out. And yeah. so it's kind of nice. I'm going back on the festival circuit this year and stuff being planned for next year. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait so, until the festivals. So, yeah. I miss festivals so much. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, got, so got that back up and running. And, and one of the other new gigs I got, I'm the artist relations rep. Uh, for the United States for tycoon percussion. So that wow, got me a steady. Yep. So I work with a lot of the vast majority are like Latin style artists, but there's guys from, you know, across the pond, both ways yeah. I get to, to work well, we with. Are, so fun. We're actually going to listen to one of your songs next called um, oh. sister India. Tell us a little, just a little bit oh. about it. Yeah. So that one, it's actually my lady's favorite song. So I had the opportunity and I have to bring this up a gentleman named Badal Roy. Uh, he just recently passed. I was a friend of mine. He was the tabla player, the Indian tabla player for Miles Davis. I got the chance to to work with him and and become friends and family. So it was really sad to just, you know, not only was he just a brilliant and talented musician, but
but an absolutely beautiful human being. And, mm -hmm. and so there was a, an event called Indians and Indians to where it was a blend of uh, Native American influences and music and culture with India, like, you know, Eastern India on, on their music and culture. And so that, that was a major influence on, you know, even for me and how I play my music, I've had the opportunity to work and study a variety of genres and styles from around the world due to a phenomenal musicians I got to work with. And this was, you know, one of the end products uh, making and creating and writing Sister India uh, years ago. Absolutely. Well, um, after that, we're going to listen to Medusa. So uh, tell us about that, Darwin. Ooh. Well, it was after a very difficult breakup with a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, um, <laughs> and I remember staring in the mirror, having a complete and utter breakdown, and my hair had turned mm. to snakes. And mm. so, uh, obviously, that's not that hard to imagine. But um, <laughs> I I realized that Medusa wanted to be the rep represented in the song, and I started to write it. And I wrote all these great verses, and I wrote all these interesting things, and I literally sitting on my mom's porch looking out at the moon i got a complete moment from stevie nick saying hmm. make it simple what are you doing calm down this is simple <laughs> so i simplified the song and i got it back into some sort of form that i thought was um would please stevie and uh and it 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 has turned out to be one of the favorites of people. Um, it was That's just, awesome. you know, trying to understand what it's like when vanity turns you into a monster. And yeah. when someone else can uh, create that feeling within you. I understand. So that. That's what it's yeah. about. There you go. Well, and then we're going to listen to uh, one that you just sent me, Mr. Philadelphia Phil. We're going to listen to a South of Canada, North of Mexico. Tell me about that song. Uh, South of Canada, North of Mexico. Um, you know, one of the things I've done a lot of, and it's funny because just, just hearing mention of Badal, uh, of Latin music, you know, very few people remember when Philadelphia Phil fronted a Cuban style orchestra um, many years ago. It's been 15, 20 years ago, but also, um, I come up in the folkloric traditions. That's what actually what I loved about the Cuban music is it's deeply rooted in folkloric music. And that means that, that my whole life I've been listening to songwriters and the stories. And that's something that appeals to me so much is songwriters and stories. Um, South of Mexico or South of Canada, North of Mexico is one of those things that I wrote. Um, we just did a recording of it, Rusty and Danny and I, for a um, video project with a couple of poets out of San Francisco that's still being edited. But I took the tracks that Rusty and Danny and I did and I added some harmony vocals and some mandolin, uh, I believe, to that one and remixed it so that we would have something kind of like a demo of what's fresh that's going on in my in my writing and in what I'm going to be doing in studio the whole rest of this year. So that's kind of it's it's me honoring the folk singer um the the folk singers that got me started when I was, you know, young, 8 9 10 years old. That's wonderful. Well, you guys um each of you, these the next three songs are you guys' songs. So we're going to bring you guys on to um, to be able to play your music while it's playing. And you guys get the stage. So we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Um, so Adam, we're gonna hear from you first um, with Sister, Sister India, and then we'll hear Medusa, and then we'll hear South of Canada, North of Mexico. You guys ready for some amazing music? Okay, you guys, here we go. I'm just try to. So it's all about you, Adam. It's all about you. He's like, what? That's the way it should be, of course. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
could not really know He was somewhere south of Canada North of Mexico Somewhere south of Canada North of Mexico Wandering round from town to town Where the wind would blow Singing songs Hanging open, what was overgrown? House was dark and empty, there was no one left at home. And he knew he had lost her, where she'd gone, he'd never know. She was somewhere south of Canada. Guys, it has been, that was absolutely beautiful. And you guys ready for this? So I am going to bring on our Piper because two of the songs are just songs. They're just songs from other people. But we are actually going to, um, we're actually going to play uh, a song that I thought maybe, just maybe, um, Mr. Jeff could tell us a little bit about because it's a Piper song. So first off, let me just tell you the, the lineup for the next songs. Next songs we're going to hear are Sueño by Knox. I'm doing good because I know how to say Spanish stuff. I'm just saying. That's amazing because I never say words right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not in English. I'm just saying. And then we're going to listen to The Golden Ring, which is about wow. what we're going to listen to. And then Out of Mistakes by Chris Wood's band. So I wanted you to tell us a little bit about The Golden Ring. Tell us about that. Well, The Golden, Re Ring, is, yes, the Golden Ring is a competitive... Golden Ring is a competitive jig. Uh, I'm in... Um, besides Celtic Rain, I'm in a competitive pipe band, the Fountain Trust pipe band, and we competed with that tune, oh, quite a while ago, um, and so it is a traditional jig, and some jig time, um, and it was part of a competitive set, because when you, when a pipe band competes, it's normally a medley of tunes, considering march, cross bays, reels, and jigs, and you always have to finish with a bang, right, so that the, the judges will be impressed, and also, it's uh, it's complicated, and you have to prove that the pipe band can get through that at that speed and not fall apart. Uh, so you always have to finish with it with a jig or a reel or something that gets people's feet tapping. So this is one of nice. those tunes. So. Well, it's going to be recorded, but you do have your small pipes there. So what you should do, do while it's playing is you should show them your fingering because that would be so cool for them to see okay. while it's playing. 
but you should mute me because I, otherwise. Oh no, you're totally gonna be muted. Okay, okay. It'll be the recording that's playing, but your <laughs> fingers. It'll be so cool to see your fingers. Like you know, we don't know if you're wrong. By right the way. Now? The only person who knows you're wrong is you and every other piper out there. That's right. So I'm just saying. I'm praying no So definitely have some light. Put some light on you because right uh, now you're a little dark. And exactly. you're the you're the second song, so don't worry. You got plenty of time. And then we'll have a jig old time about it. A jig old time, baby. So we'll bring him back for that song. It's going to be, it's going to just going to be a, a, a really fun time. But first... We get to have a dance in time with the rest of the group and everybody else. But anyways, needless to say, you guys, are you guys ready for this amazing music? I'm telling you, the first song is from, is, is a Spanish tune from a new group. And I'm still working on getting pictures from them because I can't seem to find them on Facebook. I usually just rip the pictures off Facebook. By the way, thank you, Facebook, for letting us rip pictures off of your site. But let's have a little bit of fun with the Spanish tune. You guys ready? Here we go.
Loving this, you know, it's been interesting because I have played with almost everybody on this screen. I think I don't know, Adam. Have I played with you before? I don't can't remember if I've actually played with you or not. I don't think I we. Remember that. I don't think we've technically done we've, a we've, gig together. We've played near each other. <laughs> yeah, very, very in the, near in the each same other. park. <laughs> in the same park. <laughs> It's a matter of yes. time. The same the same there time. is no escape. There is no escape. There's <laughs> it is inevitable. Happening. Well, that's the thing. I like, okay, so I invited quite a few people to the birthday bash, but the ones that I, the, I'm so glad you guys are the ones that said yes, because frankly, to be completely honest, there, there are people in my life that I want to play music with. Like that, and be, before I die, there there's things in my life I want to do before I die, right? Before the before I, the bucket list, and and my bucket list is usually okay. the people I want to play with, like the people I want to play music with, um, and there's a lot of them, and you guys are on my list, like all of you. So that I I've I've played music with most of you, but I will play music with all of you on the screen eventually completely for a long time so that's just like that i have like because you guys sing to my heart so it makes me so freaking happy so i i it, so so my my next question becomes this what is what is the one thing musically or not musically that this pandemic has shown you hey i want to do this i haven't done it yet but i'm going to do this what is the one thing what about you, Adam? What's the one thing you're thinking? <sighs> He's like, th- why'd you pick me first? <laughs> oh, no, I, I love it, though. It's like, I think the one thing that, the, like, even the pandemic, just to work in general, is like, you know, you know, what else can you do when you fall down or go through tough times? It's like, you know, the, the world keeps on spinning. The, the next day is like coming in, you know, during tough times, you know, for those that you work with and what have you, is just like, you know, it, 
to quote, you know, the, you know, the John Carter from Mars, like, you know, showing your metal and, you know, all that fun, sexy barbarian stuff. And, and so I think for me, it's like, and I'm already like an extrovert and I'm all about, like, I love working. Hence, you know, means like, I like, I'm an AR guy. I run a studio. I'm a professional musician. I do education. And, but I think for me, it's just like the pandemic definitely just really punches the holes. It's like, you know, this, you know, like, so, you know, there's stuff I want to do, like the bucket list. And uh, for me, it's just the epitome is like, even if like, yeah, it's like the world may not be gone tomorrow, but yet if we're locked indoors, you know, for months on end or whatever, it's just, you know, it's, it's all about opportunity. And I think that's probably the one thing that I think I've been actually been going out for more is, you know, opportunity because there's just so much and, and even more so on the bit of opportunities as to where if you're reaching out to somebody, you don't hear back from them. It's like, and everyone's like, well, isn't it desperate if you follow through it, or if you call back, it's like, well, no, especially now, it's just like, I don't care. I was like, like, yeah, I don't want them to feel dirty and used inside if I keep on reaching out to them. But at the same time, it's just like, I'm, you know, I was like, you know, it's like, dude, it's kind of like now or never. And if you don't, it's like, guess what? I'll be moving on because like all the beautiful yeah. people on this screen, it's just like, you know, there's people that we want to do stuff with or without you. We're doing things. So I think if any, the pandemic has even increased motivation, drive and seeking opportunity, at least there, you know, for me. Yeah, there are people in my life. I'm like, OK, I contacted them five times and they've never contacted me back. And in my mind, because of pandemic, I'm like, did they die? Like, you know, <laughs> I was like, I'm like <laughs> we went, like, we went dark. You can't be like, oh, like, my oh. God, they actually might be dead. Like, that's a very big possibility, you know, and you're just like, holy crap, this person might have actually died. <laughs> you're like, what do I do? What do, holy crap. So like, you, then you try to figure out like, did they die? You know, <laughs> that's happened to me actually happened and the guy died and i'm like oh my gosh like why didn't i reach out sooner you know oh yeah absolutely absolutely what about you darwin um i'd like to learn animation well enough to create uh the world for my music as i age out of the pop rock world alternative even um I'd like to create a space for my music that is still me and that That's that beautiful. is still Darwin Prophet. And That's really um, amazing. Uh, kind of catch up to Rebecca Sugar, you know? Yeah, I'd love universe. to see that world. <clears throat> I would and, love to see that world. Um, other than that, I'd still like to get to the home of my heart, which is Britain. I'd like to see the Caledonian Forest. I want to see the tour in Glastonbury, and I want to visit um, all the places that King Arthur and Oscar Wilde walked, because those are my two muses that um, never give up. Samuel is like, I'll go with you. Put me in your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we all will. There might, right be, there, with you. Totally there might be a slightly less awkward way for Samuel to get there. <laughs> not in the luggage. <laughs> uh, the plane ticket would probably be better. Just a little you, bit. Maybe. You'll have to punch air holes and all the rest of that. <laughs> right? That's okay. It's all right. We'll put them in a crate. They'll be down in storage. <laughs> we do make money. Oh, yeah. It's all right. We I'd likely be in someone's luggage as well. So, <laughs> Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the cheaper way to fly. You know, there you go. <laughs> what about you, Samuel? What about you? Oh, what the, me. What, what is it you want to? Ob obviously, you want to get Scotland. But besides Scotland. Uh, he wants yes. to stay out of luggage. He wants to stay out of luggage. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Scotland. My spiritual home. The home of my heart. Edinburgh. Love to get back there someday. Um, um, yeah, so... Um, what was the question? <laughs> what is, just, what sorry, is the thing about that you like, haven't oh, yes. done yet <laughs> that Something you really want to do? The bucket list oh. thing that's just that one thing within the next oh. 
within the next 10 years that you could possibly create or make or that you just haven't done yet that the pandemic has shown you it's it's time to it's time to do this yes well <laughs> well <laughs> doctor don't doctor well, okay <laughs> so during the during the whole pandemic thing i i really let go of the <clears throat> me, really kind of let go of the <clears throat> the persona of <clears throat> Mr. Samuel J. Lawson, the classical guitarist. And I've been expanding into more areas and different doing different things and and you know, I have my, my Green Dragon guitar that is like just beautiful and I love the sound. And uh so I've I've been using this more. I've uh, you know, during during pandemic, I started using my 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 lute to do to do things that you're not supposed to do with the lute, like play modern music. <laughs> and um, and and now now when I say modern, I mean okay. So I studied 16th century music in college. So modern is anything that like was in my lifetime and even probably before I was born. <laughs> so modern is is a as a relative term. When you very relative. Somebody very relative. But I, I was stuck in the, I was stuck in this. 16th and 17th centuries for a long time. So <clears throat> my version of modern is is not the same as, you know, Billboard Music's version of modern. Um, what do we have there? What's Darwin showing us? The first part, Song of... There you of go. This is Song something from the Narcissist side. Uh, it's the first part or Song of Airs containing oh, bizarre and body songs from Michael Renaro, who ended up being Fredwin Piper. Uh Collection of Elizabethan and Jacobian songs. Oh, that's great! <laughs> nice. And yes, and 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 I will copy them. And they're mostly Thomas. Oh, I love stuff. Oh, we would love. Yeah. That. Oh, oh can I, I, I will copy I, yes. this He's for you. And yes. thank Fredwin Piper, who had the band called Green Crown, who is now yeah. a fellow at Oxford, uh, nice. at the new. Oh, what a dream! <laughs> New medieval mm. Latin dictionary um, that he is helping write, but this was his thing before, and this is a, oh, a, a whole thing of Thomas Campion songs. Daunty darling, so quick, so hot. A secret <laughs> lover too. Uh, yeah, there's even one wow, in here called. Dildo, I'm sorry. I believe. It, no. I, I, I got. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I can't let. So there's something you said, darling. I cannot let go. Okay. So if there's a if there's a a, a a very imbecilic person who lives in Oxford, they're an oxymoron. Is that what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that has got to happen. Yes. <laughs> well, that's so uh, funny. Because <laughs> he's the one well, I wrote Medusa about. So yeah, exactly. That's funny. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, well, Ron, Ron says, so, uh, pack me so, yeah, along with all of you. More. <laughs> so, who's next? Ron, Ron five says, please pack me all along with you. So we're all just going to stick ourselves in, in, uh, in suitcases and send ourselves to great. Try to get you all say. in one suitcase, Ron. It would be, <laughs> it would be a little bit messy. It would be a huge, can, longest suitcase. You know, that would be the best. Ron, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we really put Ron in two suitcases, I don't think, I think Ron wouldn't like it. <laughs> I don't think he would like it. Yeah. Think it'll so be Jeff, the and it'll be bigger inside. Yes, I love yeah. that idea. So Jeff, uh, we did. Uh, I have the same question for you, but we also had a comment. Uh, says uh, very cool, but does Jeff have neighbors? <laughs> I I do have neighbors. They're extremely tolerant. Um, I'm very uh, selective about when I play, and my house has very good insulation. Yes, insulation is a very important thing. Always a bonus. <laughs> With a piper. Yeah. <laughs> very important. Very important. So, Jeff, yeah, what is what is it that uh, what is the pandemic showed you that now it is on your bucket list that you just you've got to do? Well, here's the thing. About thirty years ago, I read a text by the 18th century samurai Yamoko Teshi, who said. Good Lord. Live every moment with as much strength as you can, right? And it's been yeah. it's informed me ever since. So there the bucket go. list is just never ending. There's all kinds of things that I always want to do. I try to spend every day paying attention, learning, and connecting. Yeah. But if I was going to answer the questions musically that happened just during this window of time during the pandemic, there's, there's two things that come to mind, which is one, 
I was scheduled to go to Israel before the pandemic hit. Yeah. It's been rescheduled four times. So by God, if it happens, I will be playing small pipes on the banks of the River Jordan. So that's one. Uh, and two, I always did intend to write tunes. And during this pandemic, I, I finally did uh, because I had the time and because you told me I had to for the next album. And you're, very, you're very strict. So, so there you go. Yes, I am. Excellent. But but you love me. I love you dearly. <laughs> okay. okay. Very, How did Falcor get to Darwin's house? I know. Me and your dog could be our freaking dogs. We have had this. My dog is in the other room. Wow. Very okay. unhappy that Live I'm not letting him I. in right now. Oh, man. Yes. It's a shame you can't get them both on camera at the same time. Oh, my gosh. Well, I could because he's very unhappy that he's in a box right now. Yeah, we and can, we can hear on. him. You can hear him. I want him. to be clear. I want to be clear <laughs> yes, I can hear him. He's not happy right not, now. That's not me playing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ron said, Ron said, uh, bucket list, I can play a bucket. Sorry, I'm I guessing can... Adam can already do that. <laughs> I mean, Ron says, I'm very, I'm a very compact <laughs> percussionist. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I could. Hey, if you can catch a stick in a wire to it, it's a whammo pull, and you can play it like bass guitar. Tell, yeah. uh, tell Ron this well, is the kind of humor that's we, going to get him vetoed from coming with us. Very vetoed. So the <laughs> only person we haven't heard from yet is is our Mr. Philadelphia <laughs> Phil. Are you over oh, there, he Mr. He just ran away. Oh, he he ran away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So everybody, let's let's. So tell me, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Phil, what is it that oh, you? What is it that you want to do that you just haven't done yet? That's probably a loaded question, isn't it? Yet is, is our Mr. Philadelphia. Yep. So just letting you know, if you're, if you're I'm here. to us on your phone, we are a little bit behind and you're and we can hear everything that I'm saying. So if you follow if you want to wow. not have that on, because I can hear everything you really well. want to do that you but, just haven't done yet? Okay, so I have a weird time delay on there. Yeah, because um, you're listening to me on on you on. on yeah, the... for some reason my headphones aren't working. Oh. So. I'm here. I'm listening to everybody on this. Oh. <laughs> That's not good. So I'll mute yeah. all of us except for me, and you just let me know. So what is it that yeah. you? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Yet, um, what you would like to do. Rebecca, as as you and Samuel know, when we entered into the pandemic um, coming out of 2018 or 2019 coming into 2020, I honestly had already started very much living every day like like it was got to be the best day ever because there may not be another one. And when the pandemic came, it was just a continuation of what the last few years had been. And the only thing on my bucket list was to still be here plunking on a guitar a couple of years later, and here I am. So I'm really kind of, uh, you know, as far as musical bucket lists, there's always a new song being written. There's always something new to play. There's, uh, you know, um, having fun with this new toy that, that arrived six months ago or so and exploring those new sounds and, uh, Wow, I've been so happy. This beautiful, uh, this is Karen's beautiful mandolin that, that she so graciously insists that I play on once in a while. It's a, a, a wonderful Steve Anderson. It's the second mandolin that, this, that the Master Luthier ever built. Um, number two of his, when he began building mandolins, the Master Luthier from Idaho. And now I think he's in Washington State or Oregon, something like that. And I get to play the mandolin. Um, really just, just every day being able to work on, on something and make music and write songs and be here and still be amongst you all is kind of my whole bucket list. That's, uh, everything else is just, uh, well, I've got big doings coming up in the spring. So, and there'll be more on that later. Um, really just. Just every day being able to work on on something. And yeah, I know and you kind of dealt with. Uh, you've had you've dealt with cancer quite a few times over the next last couple of years. 
So you probably had to face this more than we have, frankly. We're going to go on to some beautiful music and I'm going to, I'm going to just say bye Samuel for a minute and bye Mr. Jeff. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you guys. Um, so Adam, we're going to listen to brush song. Tell us about brush song. Hold on one second. I got to unmute you. Tell oh. us about brush song. <clears throat> Is it Bush song? I didn't write a oh, brush sorry, Bush song. Sorry, I put an R in there. Just it's my brain. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I have a beautiful I brain, a brush? and it adds things all the time. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> yeah. So Bush song was a fun little collaboration. Speaking of like just talented musicians, uh, Mario Hoven, I got to work with on this album. I for years, I was having a lot of people ask me, I was like, you need to do a didgeridoo like album. I was like, okay. And so, you know, years ago, I was just like, all right, I'll just do it. So I went to, it was like a young engineer at the time. I just went to his house, threw down instruments. I had an idea of what I wanted to do and recorded some songs. But, uh, but with Mario, I actually recorded him at my, my house and just sat down, kind of told him the premise of what we were doing. And for Bush song, I was like, you know, let's, and I, at the time, I can't remember the show, but there was like a young man that was like traveling through Australia and it was, but it had a very interesting, I guess, just a just production or the, the composing of the music. So it had didgeridoo, but it had a guitarist that was, it is seeming it had more of that down home back, you know, backwater in the swamp, just jam. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, I was like, I love that energy and it's just hard not and it's very difficult to not want to be you know just all sorts of giddy when you hear that type of guitar you know just a little chicken picking going on and then you add a didgeridoo this it, then it's a party and so bush song uh kind of you know inspired of just that the energy in the mix of kind of like down in the bayou meets in the bush uh but in general i just some of this called it bush song more so on the respects to just you know how i was taught by a yeah maro does rock and and how i i you know i learned actually from a tribal elder from uh northern australian uh arnhem land area so so this brings in a little bit of that down home that grassroots of americana with the roots of you know the australian aborigine and inspiration Unmute yourself, girl. You're muted. I was letting you, you talk. See, there you go. Like, <laughs> and then we are gonna have um we're gonna we're gonna listen to me, Woody Bob, and you by Philadelphia Phil. So um Mr. Philadelphia Phil, let's see if we can get him on here and listen to him. Hey, Mr. Phil, so what tell us about me? And uh, tell us about me, Woody, Bob, and you. Are you there, Phil? So tell us about me, Woody, Bob, and you. Okay, so we're going to have some technical difficulties. So we'll just go on. There, That's going to play. And then, ah, oh, there you I, are. I was just dialed out for a second. Me, Woody, Bob, and you. There you go. So we'll just go on. There, that's yep. going to play. Are we all there? Yeah, me, Woody, Bob, and you was uh, was dreamt up. I woke up with it in my in, uh, woke up with the song writing itself at uh, four o'clock in the morning on Christmas morning, um, and I just got up and I ran out and grabbed paper and started writing down everything I was dreaming up. Went back to sleep and got up and spent a big part of Christmas Day of twenty twenty. Writing me, Woody, Bob, and you. There you go. All right. Well, we're going to listen to that. And 
And then we're going to listen to one by Miss Darwin Prophet. We're going to listen to uh, Daddy's Little Angel, although it's it's a little different in the um, in it the the wordage in your um in what you sent me so tell me what what i'm doing wrong because i think it's i don't think it is it daddy's little angel or is it something different no it's daddy's little angel i wrote perfect it about the um the tv show lucifer i love that show <laughs> i so love that much. show and neil gaiman is one of my favorite writers and he wrote the comic and then wrote most of it um and when it was one of those things that was just like the um that coming out was a very kate bush moment for me and um and it just wrote itself uh, so it's mm. a song for lucifer morningstar about what it's like to not be <laughs> daddy's a little angel you nice. know, <laughs> I love that show so and so, much. Oh my yeah, God. so it's a song for Neil, and it's a song for the show, and um, I absolutely love it. And it was it was very inspiring, and it was a, a fun thing to write about what it's like to lose your wings. I think we've all felt that a little bit, <laughs> at least over the last exactly. couple of years. And how more to, so now than ever before. And now we're so. getting them back a little bit here and there. And I'm like, we can fly a little bit. Just kidding. And it's, <laughs> and it's way more about my new production sound. So I'm, I'm mm, that's glad awesome. playing that. That makes me happy. That's really awesome. Well, awesome. Well, you guys know when it's your song, you're on, gorgeous people. All right. You guys ready? All right. Let's do this thing. All right, so Mr. Adam, you are first, gorgeous man. So it's some beautiful music. I cannot wait for you guys to hear this amazing music. And here we go. Got jammed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try this again. <laughs> Oh, 
So yeah, beautiful music by beautiful people. I'm just saying, amazing. You guys, amazing. <clears throat> I will say this, I have had so much fun. Thank you guys so much for being on this one year anniversary birthday party celebration. Yay. So it's been, it's been, it's been kind of crazy. Yeah, so I started this a year ago and we were in total lockdown by that point. And and I was like, okay, well, what are we gonna do? We're in total lockdown. And I was like, well, one of my major bucket lists was the show, frankly. And so I was like, yeah, this is gonna happen. Because like, I went from having all these gigs to literally having nothing. And I'm like, okay, well, crap. You know, there you go. And so what do you do? Well, you do the things that, frankly, you didn't have time to do before. And this show is one of them. And now it's become just such a part of my life um, to where now I have three syndications and it's just starting to blow up, which is kind of ridiculous and amazing to me. So, uh, so the question becomes this, like when, where, what are you guys doing next? What is happening right now? What are you working on? Uh, songs, projects, writing. Uh, where are you going to be performance-wise? I we want to know so that we can we can be able to tell people so that they can go and find you because you you guys are the people that I want to work with, and if your guys are the people that I want to work with, then they're the people that need to be able to be heard. Just just putting that out out there um ron does say great show everyone 
Thank you, Ron. Hey, thank you, Ron. So oh, sweet. Ron. Love Ron. He's, a, he's amazing. Hello. I know, right? You're a big so, sweetie head, Ron. <laughs> right? Okay, so... Uh, big chest. <laughs> big <Love>. chest. <laughs> right? Is, so, Miss Miss <laughs> Darwin, tell us tell us what you're working on, um, and 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 what where can we find you and all of those great all those great things. Well, right now, still working. New songs come up every day, and I'm doing a lot of teaching um, online for voice, guitar, piano, songwriting, ukulele, bass, whatever my kids are needing to do, and. I just had one kid get a scholarship to Baylor in music performance. I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, and so I'm I'm building my online studio teaching thing, and because um, that's my life kind of right now. Um, but writing, you know, songs keep coming, and they will be recorded again. I just did one called "You Rescued Me" for a friend of mine that. Um, does uh has a big bus and does rescues all across the country and takes dogs from one dogs and cats from one place to another and um so you know things just keep popping up and uh but you can find my stuff on youtube just look up darwin prophet i'm the only one that's why i chose the name <laughs> so oh, on facebook awesome. on on youtube on instagram on whatever um, I haven't TikToked yet, but it will happen because it has to. Um, well, but I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna come, you know. I have I'll a, get around to it. I'll get around TikTok to it. Thing. But, I hardly uh, use but it. <laughs> mostly, I, I, you know, I don't have any uh, live shows worked up. I'm now living in Kentucky, which is new for me. Um, so I'll be in the Lexington area, and that. You know that whole thing. It's not that far from you, though, and I'm kind of no, excited it's not. That oh my gosh, we're I thought you were in Texas. I'm like, oh my now. god, we are so not far from each other. This yeah, is happening. and I have a huge this is five, five acre farm with like a Holy forest crap. and uh, horses and a place to put your tent up and just come oh. visit and write yeah, no, this this is this is freaking happening this is happening like we yeah. are gonna have to come and say hi you are too close Absolutely, for us I not need to, to come know say more hi. about you know i need to, to get into some of my roots i mean as far as uh celtic music was concerned you know kaylee's muse and six mile bridge were my introductions and my friends in that world and um but i feel it and i feel it's kind of a part of me too that's been missing so because yeah. i'm you know i'm i'm the, i'm the english version of that i'm the the, the kate bush version of that and and i want to yeah. explore more of that so you well, guys need I, to come teach me i say i married well because i married a scotsman but technically i'm very welsh and very english so <laughs> so i understand being the english side of everything <laughs> Right. I'm a lot more Irish Chinese. than Welsh, and I I really thought I was Welsh because I'm a day I'm a Dalit, you know. But yeah, um, yeah, I found out that the red hair. There you go. Yeah, it's like. okay. It's all right to be English. Thank you very much. It's all right. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's yeah. all right. That's what I've decided in my life. It's okay. So since since okay. festivals and and so I would love to get back to festivals and Doctor Who yeah. conventions and comic cons and let's sci -fi talk stuff again. because i think i can so. help you with some stuff now that you're closer in i think i think yeah not not a texan things. anymore yeah there you go dude so much we Sorry, the you, are getting we're back. gonna have to after this you and i not tonight yeah, after the show we need but to talk. later Since we have matching dogs <laughs> I, we have matching dogs they have to meet i'm just saying they have to. All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, Mr. Adam, Mr. Adam, 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 tell us about what you're doing now. I know you've told us a little bit, but what else are yeah. you doing? And I know the Playground Productions is happening. Tell us more about that. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, it's so good to have the community events and 
and like, you know, my open house just to get everybody together and supporting one another. That's been just a blast. And, and so looking forward to having more of, you know, or just having the third Fridays back, getting more artists to come out, to, you know, do a little ditty, try out some new material for, you know, for people that hang out, you know, and show and, and yeah, the one thing I also, for those watching that don't know, for my studio, it's even available. It's it's not a pay for play, but I I have it available so where artists or performing artists can rent the space, and and which is mainly the rent is mainly just covering you know the expenses, the joys of well, I'm there running sound, I have to turn the lights on, and I need my beautiful lady to run the bar. You can make a million dollars at the door, you know, and that's all you. So that's the one thing I'm really looking for. We've ar we've already had at least, you know, towards the end of last year, had a couple acts that rented the space and had, you know, fun turnout, you know, they got their money back and then some. So that's another thing I'm really looking forward to is just, you know, giving like, you know, independent artists to those who, you know, some, cause some venues it's like, unless you're bringing in, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of people to come out, and it's just like, you know, we can't have you. It's like, you know, for me, it's like, you know, if you just bring 20 people, you know, it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I it, break even and it works out. So it's, yes, it's one of those things as to where I, I want people to have the opportunity. Nice. Thank it's you. A nice space. Uh, and it makes it so that 20 people doesn't feel like it's five, you know, so that's quite nice. So it, 20 people, it, it's a, that's a good number in there and and frankly yeah. it would be good for for a lot of people who maybe want to do um recitals and um yeah, or, a lot of those. yeah a lot of those i can imagine yeah, i've had cd or cd, CD release releases. parties yep. exactly that's i was going to go straight there um all of those great play that that's a great place because it makes it feel so cozy and you have you have an open you have a bar that's a paid bar that has, you know, a limited supply, but it has something people can bring oh, yeah. things in. It's, it's a beautiful space. You have a beautiful space. Thank you. As I say, yeah, it's, yeah. I said, it's a playgrounds. Like I designed it based off of my own dream of my own studio of it being more, it's a performer's studio. I never wanted to have, you know, all the little Uber quiet. I mean, I do have an isolation vocal booth, but everything else is built to, you know, it's musicians who work a room more so. And like, and I invested in great mics. It's like, you know, I tell them, what do I do? It's like, play, rock the room. If you sound good and you feel good in here, it will sound great going to, well, I say tape, but, you know, going to the hard drive, like it will sound fine. And so that's yeah. the one thing I'm looking forward to, you know, more this year is having more artists and just people utilizing the space for their own creative needs, or if they just want to get together and have a, a party but otherwise like you know and that's the website or to check out more and that's playground indie.com that's indie is indy.com yeah. for anybody who wants to check that out and i but for me like i said just got my fun stuff coming up at the end of this month i'm back to playing more live music at yoga studio so i can play all my you know didgeridoo native american style flutes and world percussion instruments you know to to have zen with the groove and get go. people into it. So it's, that's a lot of, and, and more stuff. And I'm got a couple of invites to a couple of festivals, this, you know, stuff in Ohio. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. And I'm yeah. playing a lot more Middle Eastern Arabic music. Uh, awesome. And, oh, my, oh, the annual belly dance event that I host yeah. is called uh, Evening of Doom. Doom spelled D-O-U-M in November. Um, I'm hoping to have another one that's going to be in April. I just have to work that out with a, one of my good friends that kind of co-host it with me to where the one in April called um, a suit up and rocks as more it's set up for either vets, you know, experienced dancers and performers doing just completely new off the wall stuff, but also allows like students and baby dancers or new performers yeah. to, a, a venue to play. But evening of doom, I bring in dancers and performers pretty much you know from illinois ohio and kentucky come and actually perform uh that evening and they're some of the you know top talent in all those areas that come you know for this and it's you know the theme is dark because it's very you know it's an underground dance series but we fill the house up to where we have just in the audience 50 people 
will come and watch this. And yep, we serve craft beer from luckily I have a microbrewery right behind or I got a brewery you right behind do. me. It's Ultimate amazing. studio when the breweries right behind you. It is and, so awesome. And I've got my friends at Ash and Elm. So I've got local cider that we serve now and some vino. And Ooh. and it, but of course for those who don't wish to have the adult in you know libations, we do have all the sodi in the water, you know, for those who just care for that. And so yeah, so it's so yeah, looking forward to just having those events being more well attended and looking into possibly also not only having those live, but connected for those who can attend in person to actually live stream it at the same time as well. There you go. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, um, Mr. 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 Philadelphia Phil, tell us about what you're doing right now. And what's coming what up am next I doing right now? Well, I'm sitting on the sofa watching the show and enjoying it a great deal. Um, also, also wondering at the amazing amount of talent. Um, I didn't know. I didn't, you know, it's funny because I played world music for years and years and years. Uh, the last adventure was, was Mumbai Taxi. And that's now, I think, more than 10 years ago. I think, I think we did the um, second Playing for Change Day promo video with all the guest musicians was I think we shot that in 2013. So that's how long it's been since Mumbai Taxi has been around. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just looking around the room and I'm seeing instruments and I'm getting ideas even as we go along listening to everybody else. And like I said, I'll have some big announcements. Uh, life is spinning in fantastic new directions right now. And I'm really thrilled about all of it. Um, There'll be some announcements in later in the spring, some goings on. I'm going to be doing some traveling. I'll be back east um, in late March, early April. Nice. Um, yeah, I'll be back on the East Coast. Um, and there might be a trip way out west coming up this summer. And in the process, I, I mean, mostly I'm just devoted to building the studio and getting um, years and years and years of new songs, re of songs recorded, that many of which you have sung on with me on, on many occasions. Samuel has played, and I'd like yeah. to get some really good recordings of some of these songs done this year. Um, awesome. That's the big adventure, I think, is, is uh -huh. finally getting lots of music that's never been properly recorded, recorded and released, um, as much as I can in 2022. That's what, that's no, my yeah. other, my, that's my musical ambition. Yeah. And then on the other side of life, like I said, we'll have some big announcements soon. Yeah. I know. I, I understand that completely for Celtic rain. It's been really an interesting uh, situation because we are in the midst of writing this new album called legacy. Um, but you know, I, I've been sitting here with my guys and I'm like, Hey guys, okay. So we're going to write this album. We're going to do this thing. And then it's a matter of, okay, well, you know, um, we'll be writing this album and I am like getting song after song after song. And I, I started my, I did this one baby making song and I've gotten, I'm like, I got my one baby making song. I wrote my one baby making song and then I got like four more. And I'm like, holy crap. Okay, well, I didn't know there's all the baby making songs in there. And then I was like, all right, well. And then, the rest and of then, us suspected, like, though. Yeah, they're all just like sitting back going, uh, okay, that's a lot of baby making songs. And, then, and I, but I looked at all of them and I'm like, okay, you guys, this is about our legacy. So oh. write about our legacy. And so they are, and I'm over here writing baby making songs. <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess it's that makes ambition. a legacy. <laughs> Composed the world's first baby making pipe team. There you go. The first world's first and last baby making pipe team. Probably, yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm, I'm sure it'll saying. be a smashing surprise. I'm just yeah. saying, that's hilarious. Needless to yeah, say, so yeah. it's been interesting though to watch because our, our writing styles are so different. And we, so we go and write our songs and then we'll come together and be like, okay, well, this is what we'll put it on our, our we have a, a shared. Uh, Facebook group and I'm like here's here's you know a, a here's a, a track you know something I recorded on my phone 
so you guys, okay, make your make your part, you know, and then we'll all come together and figure it out. Whereas Samuel and, and Jeff have to get yep. together and they're like, we have beer and we're going to write this. <laughs> and I, I just walk away. <laughs> And that's what's been that's, happening lately. That's our own like, okay. colorful idiom, uh, Rebecca. <laughs> yes. So it's Celtic Grain, I'm like, Celtic Grain, I'm like, just, we're going to write away. this stinking it's album. <laughs> and I'm giving you beer and I'm <laughs> walking away. And this is going to happen. <laughs> and I'll just that's come in every once in a while and, yeah. you know, crack the whip and go, keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> but it's hilarious. I don't know. It's yeah, been weird for Celtic it, yeah. Grain. We were writing. We're practicing, but at the same time, it's been ridiculous how many gigs we've gotten and, and St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So it's just been like, things went from everything and we lost everything because things closed down three days before St. Patrick's Day. We lost so many gigs and we went to nothing for like what, for a while. And then when things popped back mm. up, they popped back up so fast for us that we were getting gigs left and right and just going out and playing like crazy and it hasn't stopped. And so it's been interesting. We've had to learn how to be safe and still play gigs. Yeah, that's been interesting. Uh, and just how to find pipers. I found a new way to find a piper. Thank you, Ron, for that. Um, it, it, because things happen, like, you know, pipers getting COVID. And, and you know, and, and poor, poor Jeff. He just totally, he's sitting there recovering as we speak. So, you know, oh, it's kind of one of those things. You're sitting there going, okay, this is the world we live in now. But we're, but we're musicians. And we're not going to not play. So for us, we're going to be next at Playground Productions. So that's going to be awesome. Yep. Uh, me and Samuel are playing with OK Indie on the 12th, which is awesome. Uh, and then we're at Primeval yeah. right after right after that. So you guys should just go go on to, uh, to our Facebook page, which is, uh, I have it down here somewhere. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash uh celtic rain now and you you will find you'll find that and it's kind of interesting because that's what we we're we're making this album we're playing like crazy march is coming march is winter is coming march is coming and and that's kind of where we are right now and mr ron says you are welcome oh i love you ron anyways so that's kind of where we are right now but we're going to talk about the new songs that are coming up next and um we have this is our last set it's so sad our last set I, I have had so much fun with all of you guys. I am so thankful that all of you have come on and are, are a part of this. It makes my heart so, so happy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but we are going to talk about the next songs to come up. Uh, the first one is uh, The Nightingale and the Rose by Darwin Prophet. Tell us about this, Miss Darwin. Um. I wrote an entire record of Oscar Wilde poems. Um, and the one that was not a direct poem was a paraphrasing of his uh, fairy tale called Nightingale and the Rose. That he wrote several fairy tales for his children, Vivian and Cyril, his two boys. And, um, and they became, you know, very popular. But Nightingale and the Rose is one of the saddest ones. And I got a chance to um, hear how it would be musically. So um, I have a very deep connection with him. He was he died on my birthday, 62 years before I was born. And he's been the greatest muse and love of my life. And um, this particular song is probably one of the favorite things that I've ever written. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. That, then we're going to listen to, um, you ready for this? We're going to listen to It's a Little Bit Complicated. This is probably one of my more favorite songs in the whole world. So tell us about this one, my dear, <laughs> Mr. Phil. It would be, but it's, it's a whole lot more favorite when we get to do it together. Um, I love doing this song with you. Yeah. Um, 
Well, this song, actually, this song got written on the way to the Central Pennsylvania Festival of Arts and Music and State College about, I want to say, let me see, it was about five or six years ago, me and Danny Hargrove, Jack Gummer and Rusty Humphrey, I think, I think, I think that's what the group was. We're all piled in the van to go to State College. And uh, Danny brought along a little three quarter size guitar that he had gotten for his kids that was when they were little and it was a, and so it was real nice sitting in the back of the van he had this very playable little guitar and i spent most of the trip kind of noodling around on it doing weird kind of swinging riffs and progressions and by the time we got back from doing the show up there and coming back the next day uh i had something going on and this song is that something that was going on uh <laughs> And, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, where is it, where is it the favorite song? There's several places where it's favorite. Um, I remember playing it on workshop weekends for entertainment on Saturday nights up in Michigan and uh, everybody loved it. So yeah, it's, it's a, a little song. bit complicated. Um, <laughs> sometimes well, when, you choose a simple life and sometimes you choose a more complicated one. You know what? The more complicated lives tend to be the more fun lives. So <laughs> I will have to say they bring uh, they bring a sense of communication that you've never experienced before. That's for sure. <laughs> and a sense of self. So when this song comes on, I might join you in in the in the uh, picture and just have a little fun with you if you're OK. Oh, with that, you be. should. <laughs> Singing yes, all your parts. I will sing all of my parts, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then we're going to listen to Lost Walker by Adam Riviere. Did I say that right? I probably said that wrong. Did it do that right? <laughs> I probably, I got to unmute you. And then you can actually talk to me. So there you go. Okay. Yeah, Revere. I almost got it. I did it right, kind of. Yeah. Close enough for <laughs> rock and roll. Close enough for rock and rolls. Tell me about the song. Yeah, so this one, so this concept, again, inspired by uh, Aboriginal culture on just on a walkabout. And for me, I wanted to kind of take the perspective, like at the time, there was just a lot of turmoil and everything else happening at the time I was writing. Not really so much with my life, but just a lot of friends, colleagues, um, you know, what they were going through on just not be able to find like their own footing or purpose and what have you just to where with a walkabout, you know, a young man is set out, you know, through the outback and pretty much travels the entire outback and just the country of Australia to where I like one that not like legend, but just it's stated that, you know, a young man or just a man, an Aboriginal man, that is, if you put him in a room, no windows, just, you know, all walls and what have you, and you go to him, it's like, okay, which way's north? He he'll point and he'll be and he'll be exactly right. Like there's just that intuition and intuitive of that design and build from all that I don't say like work, but just that time and travel of not only knowing your environment and being a part of it, but also really learning and developing yourself. And so Lost Walker just takes somebody who's you know, just going through hell to try to find, you know, not force an epiphany or find their meaning in life, but just, you know, but just, you know, still going through like they're lost, but they're still walking. They're still trying to find it. And so, and at the, you know, towards, and you'll hear it at the end of the song is that, you know, it finally, you know, comes to them. And this one, I actually had a, a phenomenal group uh, that had studied at IUPY. And we actually created a music video, you know, for it. So you can actually see that on my YouTube channel, this Lost Walker. And it was nice. and it was an excellent and it was all written and produced by the people that I hired because they just they told me what it was. I'm like, excellent. That's exactly what it is. So do you. And, and it was a wonderful end project. I love that. I, I love being able to. I've done that with a lot of my albums. I'm like, OK, I've got this idea. This is my tune. This is what I have. And here are other things I would like you do you and just watching people just I love it. That's like my best way to work with people. <clears throat> I love it. Well, and then we're going to have 
We're going to have Rocky Road to Dublin. So, Mr. Samuel, tell us about Rocky Road to Dublin. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rocky Road to Dublin, it's one of those... Uh, it's one of the seven story archetypes. Uh, it's a story about uh, a, 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 a journey and return home. So it's the, the story of leaving leaving your home, of uh, you know, uh, leaving. Yeah, in this in this case, the young man is from uh, is from Dublin, and uh, he goes off into the world to search for his fortune. And and then once he finally gets out there, he realizes that all he really wants to do is to get back home. <laughs> And uh, return to the Rocky Road to Dublin and and all that. So uh, it's a it's a cool tune. Lots of lots of artists have done this. Um, I've been working on this one for years. I did kind of a uh, uh, kind of a kind of a classical guitar approach to it, and then added a little bit of well, well what we do, you know, which is to put you know other instruments in and other interpretations in. I mean, I'm playing a, I'm playing a Spanish classical guitar and, and, and doing Irish an Irish song. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and we, I even do Ras, I even do like flamenco rasqueado technique during this song. You do. Uh, but and we, mi Irish. we mix so many other things in that it kind of becomes like this eclectic mess of yeah. a beautiful thing. So yeah. it's just us, you know, it's very eclectically messy and I love it. It makes my heart <laughs> happy. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, She said that she would dance with me If I brought a scarlet rose The nightingale listened as he wept For the only love he'd know She sings of him every night For all the roses are white Where does the foam of the sea this tree Can I 
treat her a little bad. The price may be too high to pay for some. Love is just a word. You build a rose and so. Say 
In the merry month of May, from me home I started, left the girls of ten, nearly broken heart and saluted father dear. Kiss me, darling mother, drink a pint of beer, my grief and tears to smother, off to reap the corn, leave where I was born, I cut the stout black on the band of scores and gone in a brand new pair of brogs, I rattled all the bogs and frightened all the dogs, on the rocky road to Dublin and one, two, three, four, five. The hair and turn her down the rocky road and down the way to Dublin and back for old Iraq. And Mull and Gall at night arrested him, so where he started by daylight next morning bright, and there he took a drop of the pure. Half and sink and lands and parries girl Whenever he's on for drinking See the lassie smile Laughing all the while At me curious style Would help your heart to bubble And they asked if I were hired We desire required Till I was almost tired On the rocky road To Dublin and one, two, three, four, five On the head and turn her down the rocky road And all the way to Dublin And whack for all the road From there I got to weigh my spirits, never failed and landed on the quay Just as the ship was sailing, the captain at me roared Said that no room had he when I jumped on board Cabin found for Paddy, down among the pigs I played some funny rings, I danced some hearty jigs I walked around me, but we went off to Hollyhead I wished myself were dead, or better far instead On the rocky road to Dublin and one, two, three, four, five Up the hair and turn her down the rocky road And all the way to Dublin and went for old Iran At Liverpool, when we safely landed, called myself a fool. I could no longer stand at me, blood began to boil. Temper I was losing for old errands, idle they began to loosen. Hurrah, me sources I should lay, 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 some Galway boys get by, and so I was a home. Then with a loud array, they joined in the fray. We quickly cleared the way for the rocky road to Dublin at one, two, three, four, five. Up the hill and turn it down the rocky road and down the way to Dublin at one, for lonely round. This has been an amazing show. Get everybody back on here to say hello, hello, hello. Amazing. And amazing. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, hello, so, hello, Mr. Hello. Phil, if you could unmute yourself because you have muted yourself and I cannot unmute you. Please uh. unmute yourself so I can unmute you and you can say good night to everybody. Good night. Thank you. Just Not unmute it. yourself. But I, I, it's been really amazing to actually watch because I have, um, I have, it's, again, it's been a year. I thank you guys so much for being a part of this um, amazing year for me. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I just thank God every day for the, for the, for for this show and, and what it's shown to me is this i have watched as people all over the world have sent in music i have i have a just just this year within one year have interviewed people in six different countries that's crazy to me beautiful and amazing and and i People who stay up where it's like literally two o'clock in the morning and they go until four o'clock in the morning and I'm interviewing them. It's, it's ridiculous, hilarious. It cracks me up. But I, I, I thank God 
every day for this show because it was the one thing that kept me through the pandemic and it's it's also the one thing that I had on my bucket list that I thought let's see let's see if this actually works and I watched it blow up I watched people just send in music that is some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard. And I thank God every day for the musicians that send me music here. I also thank God every day for you guys. Hmm. Thank you for being a part Aww. of the show. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Because I have made such amazing connections. And I thank God every day for the connections I've made. So I would say this. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you for being a part of the celebration with me. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Happy, birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, the show. <laughs> happy birthday, the radio show. Right? A very happy birthday to you. A very happy birthday to you. Don't worry about my time too bad. I show you, dear world, quite mad. A very happy birthday to you. We are quite happy. That's what makes it all work. I'm just saying. That's what makes it all work. Well, I will tell you, I thank you so much, guys, for coming on. Uh, you guys will hear their music and more. Uh, if you have music to send, please send it to CelticRain777 at gmail.com. It's for the small label and independent artist. And we thank you so Gotta much for coming. Uh, you can find us on youtube.com. Um, forward slash C forward slash Celtic rain like rain out of the sky we are the Celtic rain radio show we thank you so much and everybody say bye bye, bye.